So, guys, hello. I'm Alexis Zinoyev, and this is Introduction to Deep Learning with Kotlin DL. In this talk, I'm going uh, to go with you. Uh, sorry, uh, I need to mute myself uh, on the different stream. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, today, we will take a look uh, on, at that building blocks a neural network consists of and what are some knobs that you can tweak. Finally, at the end, I don't know how many time we will have, I'll show you how, how you can build, train and uh, use uh, a convolutional neural network, uh, which uh, famous as CNN, entirely in Kotlin, with the help of Kotlin DL, and we discuss how it can be used in production. So let's continue. I will uh, put five cents about my bio. Here I'm a Firstly, Java developer. Last year I joined uh, to the JetBrains company and now I'm a Kotlin developer. But I remember uh, crazy times with Java 5, for example, without lambdas and et cetera. Uh, I started in uh, ML and DL library development as a developer of ML module uh, for Apache Ignite. This is a huge Java in memory database, distributed database, and it includes the uh, ML module decision trees, uh, linear regression, ensemble of models, and et cetera, et cetera. And during uh, this experience, it, it, this is a, an open source project, I started my uh, experiments with uh, TensorFlow Java client. and. Uh, I think that it was it was a first step in this direction in creation of our GVM library of deep learning, independent library, not uh, related to the Apache Ignite, but it started like a part of investigation during my work with Apache Ignite project. Uh, also, I uh, became a TensorFlow contributor because uh, I will talk about that later, but Kotlin DL is built at the top of TensorFlow Java API, and uh, they are very, very um, has very strong ties with each other. I will explain later about that. Also, now I'm working in Kotlin for data science team. In JetBrains, we are trying to uh, help uh, Kotlin become more uh data science became more i don't know how to produce a new word for this be uh, more uh i don't know useful for data scientists uh maybe for somebody who want to switch from the python maybe for somebody who want to experiment in kotlin for java developers maybe who has a lack of uh, tools and instruments in their language and etc and uh if you're interested in different uh, GVM projects, you could follow me on GitHub, but we will continue. So uh, what, the mo uh, what is the motivation to create new uh, deep learning framework? First of all, uh, I think that Kotlin is uh, enough convenient language for data science. It's uh, better than Java uh, for creation of different DSLs and of course, uh, different builders. Uh, for example, the most famous framework uh, for deep learning uh, in Java, uh, DL4J has uh, not pretty API and uh, it could be improved with Kotlin DSL with different builders. And there are a lot of uh, different projects on GitHub, how it could be improved with Kotlin. And uh, some of these ideas inspired me to work in this direction here. Also, uh, no modern data science without neural networks. Of course, we could start it from ML, uh, classic ML library, but Java uh, and Kotlin uh, too has a few of different small or teeny libraries uh, that uh, supports uh, different classic ML methods like decision tree, but uh, we have no ability to train uh, from zero to hero, uh, different uh, huge uh, deep learning models like ResNet and etc., uh, and do it with the best performance. So uh, all deep learning frameworks are good enough uh, at image recognition, and 
convolutional neural networks uh, will be in examples which I'll uh, reproduce later. Uh, they are the gold standard for image recognition. And we decided to start from this area of knowledge, uh, from models in this area, uh, to provide access to them in Kotlin DL. So uh, training, uh, transfer learning and inference could be uh, strange words for you now, if you're not familiar with deep learning, but I uh, will explain them in the next slides. So uh, I hope that for this area, for CNN, for convolutional neural networks, uh, it became available uh, with a Kotlin DL power. So I will uh, present it today. Mm. The goal of this topic, not only to uh, show you to run the code and show you a few examples, uh, I want to explain some terms, explain some technologies from deep learning because uh, I know that there are a lot of different Kotlin developers now and maybe you're not familiar with deep learning. Sorry if you are a very huge expert, maybe something will be interesting for you too. Uh, today are different approaches, different uh, ways to tune and etc. But uh, a few uh, of slides, following slides will be very, very basic because we will need to start from this ground. So uh, after that, uh, we will discuss some deep learning uh, knowledges. Uh, we will discuss required and optional math knowledge because it's a cornerstone uh, of deep learning, the math. And uh, we will discuss primitives and building blocks in deep learning frameworks because without that, you couldn't train the real huge uh, neural networks. Um, and at the end, uh, we will discuss uh, the most significant things in deep learning now, and I will run a few of Kotlin DL demos if we will have enough time for that. Um, in another case, if I will, if I will not have time to finish all of these demos, all of them, of course, will be available in Kotlin DL uh, repository. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Let's start from the very basic terms. What is the model? Uh, I will try to explain uh, in easy language, okay? Not with real uh, math, uh, solid math here. I could, but I don't want <laughs> today to do it. A model in machine learning. This is a simple output of different machine learning algorithm. It could be very, very different. It could be linear regression, decision tree, neural network, uh, trainer, or something else. So it could be presented like very different things like vector of coefficients in linear regression, like a tree. It could be presented like a, uh, a sequence of layers or uh, like a neural network. So in all, this, all of these cases, a model represents uh, what was learned by machine learning algorithm. Uh, diff in, uh, as a result, it only a bunch of parameters which could be uh, ordered by different ways. For a programmer, for us, for example, a model is just an no objective data, just a Kotlin object. You should think about that with different fields uh, known like model parameters. Uh, it has a method with name a la predict, uh, which has some data as an input. Uh, and uh, we don't know how, but it combines coefficients, it combines fields of model and uh, give us a prediction result. This is uh, what is uh, the model only. It's only just a, an object with some information which could make a predict for us. So uh, the inference, another term, if you have this model object and you are going to make only predictions without changing model parameters and weights. Uh, it's uh, famous as a model inference or model prediction phase. Uh, if you want to update model weights via specific algorithm, I don't know, uh, add one to each weight or uh, minus one to each weight, or you want to multiply on something, uh, and you want to do these updates based on some new data, uh, it is uh, familiar uh, for us as a training process. The process of weights updation based on new information is only training. So 
uh, the transfer learning. Uh, imagine that uh, somebody has trained his own model on 100 terabytes of a data on a cluster with 100 GPU units and built model with 1 billion of parameters like GPT-3. Maybe you hear, heard something about that very famous model of last year. And after that, he packed his model and sp special binary format and shared it. I don't know, you download this model like a binary artifact, you put it on the directory and you could use it um, as is for inference purposes, uh, load it via, I don't know, Kotlin loader and call a predict method. Okay, the, it was inference, but if you want to update weights in the uh, pre-trained model, this is kind of transfer learning. You take a learning, uh, a knowledge, which was trained by somebody uh, in another space on another data, and you want to update uh, these ways, maybe only small parts of these ways on the last layer based on your small, tiny data, teeny data set. Uh, it will be a kind of transfer learning. For example, you could load, uh, it's not, the case for Kotlin DL today, but uh, I think uh, in the future releases, for example, imagine you download the model on the mobile device, uh, which trained, I don't know, on 1 billion images to recognize, uh, to recognize the faces, and you want to uh, uh, help the model to recognize your own face. You could add 10 images of your face, uh, update uh, a few weights in the last dense layer, for example, are um, rerun training, uh, I don't know, for one or two epochs. And uh, in many uh, cases, it will be enough to recognize your own face. Uh, for example, uh, this is a kind uh, of uh, uh, modeling of deep learning on the model devices. This is a close model of how uh, Apple devices unblock or th their uh, based on the face recognition. So uh, what is the evaluation? It will be very um, useful terms for us because the model evaluation, this is a method of assessing the correctness of the model on test data. But what is the test data? You could ask me. The test data consists of data points that have not been seen by model before. And usually the initial data set is divided on three parts. It's a train, you will train on this data. It's a validation um, to evaluate model during the training after one epoch, for example, to correct something. Uh, and test subset for final evaluation on independent data. This is very important from the statistical point of view and we will not dig deeper here, but you should keep in mind that uh, you shouldn't validate your model on the trained data. You should split it on the parts and pieces. But uh, in many cases, it's enough to take uh, one or 5% uh, of your initial data and put it there on the corner of your uh, on uh, on your table and uh, forget during the training. So uh, let's go to the neural networks. Uh, so all of the above term refer to machine learning in general, and we will move uh, uh, to one of the modeling methods. It's only one of the modeling methods, neural networks. Uh, so uh, the minimum element of a neural network is a neuron. It has inputs on the left, uh, one output, Typically, uh, it has state uh, because neuron is kind of object in programmer terms. Uh, weights related to inputs. Uh, these weights in uh, neurons you could see like uh, with Greek symbol theta. Uh, all of them could be initialized via different random numbers, but we will be updated during the training in each neuron. So the model state, the whole model state, this is a sum of all these minor states from each neurons. For example, if you have 1 billion neurons and each of them have, I don't know, four parameters, you will have 4 billion parameters in your model. So, and uh, internally in the middle of neuron, you have not only simple summator, you have a special function known like an activation function. Um, so uh, this uh, 
invokes after assuming a simple linear summing of inputs. Uh, and uh, in many cases, this activation function is non-linear function. It adds non-linearity uh, to the inputs. So uh, let's talk about place one neuron in his family. All neurons with the same characteristics are united in groups known as layers. Uh, and all neurons from layer has uh, inputs, the neurons from the previous layer. Uh, this slide, you could see the simple feed forward network produced from a few uh, flat layers known like dense, dense layers, not dense, but dense. Uh, what does forward mean here? Let's discuss. Um, uh, as uh, the name suggests, the input data is set in the forward direction through the network and each intermediate uh, or known like hidden layer because it's hidden from input and output except the input data processes it uh, as per the activation function and passes to the following layer to the following layer and following layer to the end of network this is a forward path uh, of calculation so if it has forward path i think it has backward uh, we will discuss it later but these are these um, picture this uh, neural network architecture could be described uh, in Kotlin DL, uh, this, uh, this piece of code, for example. It will be a sequential model, sequential of layers. Uh, the first layers has three neurons uh, because each animal, for example, presented as a vector with three numerical features. I don't know, age, uh, weight, or, or I don't know, height of uh, animal. Uh, four neurons in hidden layer, for example, it can be five, ten, or any uh, neurons uh, you want. So, and two neurons in final layer, because this is a task of cat dog classification. You, you should to define is, this is the dog or cat based on three features. This is not image recognition yet, but this uh, simple um, neural network could help in uh, simple classification tasks with numerical data. So um, I'm talking about numerical number vectors, but we decided to deal with image recognition photographs, right? Uh, so the fact is that any image can be represented as a numerical vector. For example, uh, we will uh, run our examples on the famous monochrome handwritten images of numbers, the data set MNIST. Uh, what is the MNIST? I uh, will show you on the next slides. Uh, it's a kind of a small uh, 28 uh, multiplied on 28 pixels in size and can be represented as a numerical vector of length uh, 784 to build a model that can recognize handwritten numbers. So we can train it on a MNIST data set uh, by designing it uh, with uh, an input uh, of size uh, 784, uh, several hidden layers uh, and an output layer with 10 neurons because uh, we has in our initial data set examples of 10 classes of digits, one, two, three, and etc. cetera. Uh, so how it looks, there are a lot of them. Uh, as I remember, uh, it includes uh, six, uh, 60 uh, thousands of uh, digits. Uh, it's enough uh, data to train neural networks and it's very starter uh, data set. I think if you uh, in UB uh, with neural networks, you will start from this data set or uh, it's uh, friend fashion MNIST, uh, where instead of uh, digits, you will have deal with or uh, different fashion things, uh, but with the same size of uh, in pixels. So uh, what's about backward propagation? Uh, to train such a model, uh, it's necessary to repeatedly run the original data set through the model, forcing the arbitrary initialized model weights to change in the direction we need. Uh, so the way 
uh, to change the weights is based on a rather old fashioned approach called back propagation. Maybe somebody had deal with, the, with this in university during mathematical analysis. I, or, or I don't know uh, what's your educational background. The method is based on the error rate obtained in the previous epoch. So um, let's discuss full training. Sorry for some math, but I'd like this, and uh, this is the reason why I'm <laughs> why I'm so glad to present you Kotlin DL today because I love math. Uh, on each epoch, we calculate the common error rate on all images. For example, we uh, classified cl classified wrong the half of data. Uh, this this means that our error rate is only uh, zero dot five. Let's divide the error rate between output neurons. Each output neuron sends the pieces of errors to its inputs to the previous layer backward propagation with respect to their weights proportionally. But for the calculation of pieces um, of error rate, we need to calculate derivatives and doing some mathematical operations. And this is very interesting point because all modern frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, maybe you heard something about them or use them, were started as framework for automatically computation derivatives and backpropagate errors out of the box. And this is the reason why we uh, decided not start from zero and don't develop our own uh, auto dif differentiation framework and uh, build our Kotlin DL framework at the top of a uh, low level API of TensorFlow. Uh, so let's go to the deep learning terms. I need to add some math here too. Uh, it uh, has math in calculations, but uh, deep learning at all, this is a math construct uh, construction. So uh, in the ideal platonic world, <laughs> uh, this is the only way to approximate a known function. Approximation could be very different. For example, you need to uh, classify points uh, in the uh, two-dimensional space. You need to uh, uh, draw the edge between them. And it could be a very simple edge. And for this case, you should train uh, the one neural network with very simple architecture. But for example, if you uh, want to add uh, to build, you want to build more complex edge between uh, subsets, for example, between cats and dogs present like two-dimensional points, you need to um, build another kind of neural network with another architecture with different layers. Maybe we'll, they will be connected uh, in different manner, uh, has another hyperparameters and etc. And uh, math uh, has universal approximation theorem, image theorem, uh, uh, will guided and engineered deep, ne deep neural network can approximate any arbitrary complex and continuous relationship among the variables, any guys. But in any cases, it could be very, very complex deep learning uh, neural network and you will wait until the sun will die <laughs> before you train uh, this neural network. So uh, about the math, mm, in my humble opinion, if you want to engage in deep learning and training your own models, then you can't uh, do without knowledge of some section of mathematics. But if you want to make only inference on mobile devices, maybe you know uh, don't need to go so deep in this case, but uh, somebody should do this work. For example, pre-train models for you. But if you want to have a deal with uh, minimal training, you need to understand some basic concepts. Uh, the full the full theory, for example, presented on this slide, I don't know, uh, this is interesting only for guys like me who develop uh, frameworks, but uh, this is not uh, the limit uh, of the theory. Uh, trigonometry, linear algebra, mathematical analysis, gradient descent, and all its variation, optimization methods, etc. But if you're a successor, for example, I don't know, you studied some optimization methods in the university or had deals in your practice, uh, I think it will be easy for you to understand some basic concepts here. Uh, first of all, from idea from linear algebra, the main data primitive um, is not just uh, 
plain data frame. In deep learning, it's an n-dimensional vector. For example, one-dimensional is just a line of numbers or two-dimensional matrix, uh, three-dimensional cube of numbers, and so on. And each n-dimensional vector has a shape. What is a shape? Because, uh, for example, you will see this in the output of my framework. So how long it along each dimension? Uh, your cube of numbers. The sequence of such numbers is a shape. So matrix multiplication. Uh, if you multiplied it during, I don't know, your diploma or etc., maybe manually, not this computer like me, uh, I remember these times. Uh, so the basic operation in each framework is just matrix multiplication. There are a lot of matrix multiplication from the start to the end. And uh, it's often called uh, during forward propagation on each layer, each time uh, we need to multiply two matrices. And in many frameworks, this operation is implemented for GPU. It's optimized, highly optimized for GPU. And this is another reason why we started at the top of TensorFlow because it includes the library uh, uh, at the, I don't know, skirt of TensorFlow, you could find them uh, there, uh, the highly optimized uh, library for calculations on GPU, on GPU units, unfortunately only for NVIDIA, not for alternative cards. But maybe it's not a problem in uh, our times. So, uh, also, uh, we need to go uh, to errors and talk about loss functions. So the neural network training occurs through back propagation of the error. But how to calculate this error? Which formula to take? And we need to find a function whose derivative is easy to calculate at any point. And after all, after all, otherwise it will not be possible to use it on the auto differentiation engine. And if we want our model to be very accurate and make correct predictions, we must update the model parameters so that the value of the loss function tends to zero as close as possible. Therefore, we can say that we are looking for the minimum of loss function, minimum. So the optimization theory has arrived, guys. And the concept of a loss function is close to the concept of metric. If you uh, face this for evaluating a model. However, uh, not every metric has a derivative such as the very popular accuracy metric, for example, the rate of uh, correct answer divided on uh, all answers, uh, which was given uh, by the model, for example, very famous metric. So uh, finding parameters of unknown functions from a known family of functions is an optimization problem. This is the reason why I will talk about gradient descent. Mm, we need to minimize loss functions, okay? So the zero means that the approximation is ideal. Maybe we will not reach it at all. So loss functions measures, uh, as I said, the cost of incorrect predict predictions and maybe uh, for example, uh, firstly, in my life, I faced it with loss functions on the uh, economy theory, uh, like um, when we are trying to uh, build a special curve and use the square root methods to calculate uh, deviation of this uh, line between different points uh, on the two-dimensional space. So on this picture, you could see three-dimensional space of different values, for example, for three neurons only. Imagine the space of search for thousands of neurons. We couldn't uh, draw this, but uh, it has uh, um, uh, such consistency, very strange, very non-convex. And what fu function we are trying to minimize? We could choose here from a lot of variants. And for example, through two of them, very famous for regression tax, MSE and uh, MAE, uh, is just a sum of uh, deviations, predictions from the true answers, correct answers. When you're trying to predict numerical continuous values, it's, uh, it works uh, better, of course. But for classification tasks, we will use cross entropy loss. It, uh, it has a very, very long mathematical explanation why it should be used, but you should believe me, just use for classification tasks, cross entropy loss, it, it will be enough for many, uh, your uh, models, it will be enough for start. So about the gradients, why we should think about that? 
also the gradient value is used in date update formula uh, and this value could be get from specific gradient descent methods there are a lot of them in deep learning not only the stochastic gradient descent and they widely use an optimization theory if derivatives are calculated by i don't know tensorflow or another framework the weights are initialized and now we should to find the minimum of last functions and update weights uh, to minimize uh, our function. How to do this? Uh, we should go uh, uh, along these strange lines, uh, uh, famous as gradients of the function. Uh, okay, how it looks. Um, for example, in this uh, two-dimensional space, we could go with minimal, minimal steps to the center of this picture uh, where we could find the minimum of our function. Gradient descent, as I said, is the process of updating the weights. And backpropagation is used to predict the relationship between the neural network's parameters and the error rate, uh, which uh, sets up the network for gradient descent. And this is the way how they uh, combine together. Uh, okay, maybe it was not so best explanation. Sorry for that, guys. There are a lot of maths here, but uh, if you will tune your optimizations uh, optim optimizers, optimization methods during uh, deep neural network trainings, you should revisit the idea of gradient descent method to deeply understand what you do. Uh, so optimizers, and this is a different improvement of the basic gradient descent methods. Optimization methods, uh, as I said, not limited the basic methods. Uh, for example, uh, they could use different memory tricks uh, trying to remember uh, what uh, direction was the best to accumulate different information, how to speed up itself uh, to go faster and faster and faster. And uh, we have uh, in uh, Kotlin DL library different uh, uh, versions of uh, SGD like Momentum, Adam, Hermes Pro, Pada Delta, and etc. All of them are supported on the GPU, or maybe not, maybe part two of them not so popular are supported on for CPU calculation but uh, uh, six of them uh, are supported on the G, on the GPU uh, out of the box so uh, let's see all of them and the competition on this chart you could see I I, I will repeat that SGD is very slow but Adam uh, Hermes probe Adagrat is really fast. Uh, they could find the minimum uh, better and faster. So our friend SGD is not enough good here, but uh, it's a working course for many calculations uh, which could help you uh, train your neural network with passion, patience. <laughs> so uh, in, Kot in Kotlin DL, it looks like the compilation of model. You should set up the optimizer, you should set up the loss function, you should set up the final metric, how to estimate your model on the each epoch, for example, and at the end. It will be compiled to the uh, graph of calculation for TensorFlow, sent to TensorFlow, and we could get the result from TensorFlow for us. So also we have another uh, built-in uh, component, it's activation functions. I will uh, trying to explain some things uh, more faster, maybe skip some slides, sorry for that, because not enough time maybe to explain all of them. What is activation functions? Uh, this different transformation of uh, linear input. So, uh, the linear input is very, it's pretty simple. It's, it has very simple derivative. It's just one <laughs> uh, in the domain of the function. We has alternative like sigmoid, like tangents. So, but the most popular, uh, most widely used is ReLU. Uh, so ReLU, what is ReLU? It's uh, just like linear after zero, but constant before. And let's sing a, little song sorry uh, i want to sing because i heard it a few days ago soft max and now uh, we could see that talan emadar megmondia uh, here, ReLU is the best. Uh, I think that for many cases you could use uh, ReLU. 
and uh, this bird uh, really help you. It it takes Relu to your uh, bright future. So uh, another things, uh, as I said, uh, we could randomly initialize our different ways, but uh, how uh, we should initialize them really randomly or all of them could be zeros or constant or random values from a uniform or normal distributions. And uh, it looks like uh, neural networks has a very, very huge problems known like vanishing gradient problem. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, when people use uh, used uh, sigmoid activation functions, uh, all in all papers, uh, scientists used randomly initialized weights and training was really hard. Convergence was slow, results were not good. And uh, we could influence on this fact uh, via correct initializ initialization, which is depends on the amount of neurons to keep the variance under the control from layer to layer. And uh, the main reasons, uh, for for example, if from uh, one point you will get uh, ingredients only zeros, or for example, in opposite you will get uh, only nuns, uh, very infinite numbers, uh, uh, due to exploding gradient problema, uh, due to a lot of matrix multiplication for inputs, for example, you initialized first layer with very small numbers, but uh, you uh, multiplied it many, 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 many times. And sometimes it uh, less to zero, sometimes it less to uh, infinity, and uh, you have no convergence for a neural network. And uh, we have some techniques which could help you. Uh, you should choose and experiment uh, during the training of neural networks with different initializers. If you dug a little bit deeper, you likely also found uh, out that one should use Xavier or Glorot initialization if the activation function is a tangent uh, and the he initialization is a recommend or one if the activation function is ReLU. So uh, in reality, your idea trying to control, like in the previous slide, uh, the mean of the activation should be zero. And the goal of different uh, specific initializers to keep the mean uh, of activation close to zero. The variance of activation output should stay the same across every layer, every layer. This is a reason why sometimes you will train your uh, neural networks with good architecture, which uh, was copied from, I don't know, from paper uh, on the good data set, but you will not get good accuracy due to this reason. Please experiment with initializer and I will uh, demonstrate today the problem with initializers. So about the layers and our building blocks of our neural networks. Uh, something uh, which is responsible for weight keeping and possible amount of operation on that. All layers uh, on this image are dense. Each neuron from uh, uh, one layer has a connection from each neuron from the previous layer. This is just a dense layer. So uh, it could be declared in Kotlin DL, uh, DL this constructor, for example. Uh, uh, also, we have a, a conf 2D layers. Uh, they has alternative nature of parameters. It takes less memory and has name filter. It really acts like very simple filter with the input images. Uh, typically, a uh, convolutional layer has a few filters, uh, 32, for example, this size, three multiplied three, three or five multiplied five, rarely seven on seven. So uh, mu let's multiply three on three on 32, and we will get only 288 days instead of thousands and dense layers typically. And the main difference, it, it could be easily trained, easily update um, faster. And the main difference with dense that conv to convolutional layers could handle together close pixels. Uh, so mathematically, uh, it looks like this. You have a special window which multiplied on different subparts of the uh, image uh, from one edge to another edge moving in one direction, uh, row by row, and etc. So uh, also we have a special 
pooling layers. Uh, the main goal of them to reduce the size of image, uh, keeping the important information. Uh, it uh, it hasn't uh, trained parameters, but uh, could be uh, used, for example, to reduce the size of image, as I said. So also we have another different layers like, like dropout, but I need to skip uh, all of them. Everything now available in Kotlin all of these layers of this building block, initializer, activation, etc. You could build different uh, neural networks for image recognition, which will, will work enough good and uh, could be easily uh, deployed on your server side and backends and etc. But how it works, how it's implemented. First of all, uh, we have a TensorFlow kernel and native code on uh, the top of that C++ API. So uh, after that, GNI calls wrapped by Java. Java API, uh, low level API like tensor operation, for example, to zoom uh, to multi-dimensional vectors to divide one of them on e each uh, from the sequence, for example, of tensors, etc. And at the top of that, <laughs> we have high level framework uh, totally written on Kotlin. It's used Java ops for layers implementation. Maybe in future we will have and the low level uh, Kotlin API, but now it's not the primary goal for us. And okay, I think I have a, a small uh, time unit for the demo, uh, maybe uh, eight minutes and let's switch on the ADA. Let's taste the code. So give me a second. I will share, I will share my screen. So uh, I hope that you see my screen. This is enough big for you. You could see all, did all the details, but I'm not sure about uh, how presentation mode will work with Zoom. So I hope uh, you could see all the code. So here we have a model. Uh, the sequential of different layers. We uh, will train on the NIST data set. I will run it uh, under the hood uh, and we will discuss the code. So the first layer has the dimension uh, of uh, uh, pixels and the height uh, multiplied on the width uh, and as a result, uh, this number. So a few dense layers, uh, presented like a matrix in memory. We could multiply on them on the forward path or on the backward path internally, of course. But in reality, we need some code here for model description, some code here to prepare the data sets. The MNIST data sets is shipped with the library. Uh, so, and the uh, small piece of code for model usage here in this, in this row uh, of code, we should compile our model to set up the optimizer Adam optimizer is the most popular, uh, the last function, the metric. Um, after that, we need to put our data set, train, train subset, as you remember, uh, to the data set parameter, uh, set up the number of epochs. During one epoch, you uh, neural network will see the whole data set. For example, you have a 10 epochs, it will train 10 times on the initial data to improve the weights. And batch size, this is a very interesting parameter. This is a number or the size of image, number of images which will taken for uh, one time to update the weights. It's smaller than the whole data set because the data set could be very huge and neural network couldn't take, I don't know, one petabyte uh, of data as a, the input. Uh, we run uh, the feed methods and after that uh, weights uh, in updation process and at the end of fitting, of training in reality, you could uh, think about feed method uh, like about train method, but uh, the API is close to the Keras API, the most popular uh, library uh, of deep learning in Python world. So our, our Evaluate method could uh, calculate the metric for you and we, we should print the results. So let's see to the logs. 
uh, logs uh, is based on the Kotlin logging. Uh, you could uh, uh, get your output in the file or any place you wish. So uh, here we could see uh, some messages from the TensorFlow. Uh, don't worry about that. So uh, parsing of images. After that, we uh, the uh, some debug information if you're interested about an initialization process. So uh, here we could see uh, our error rate, uh, loss value, metric value, and here is accuracy. We are trying to reach accuracy one. Uh, we value one, uh, one hundred percent of accuracy. Uh, so uh, at the start, it's only ten percent, uh, but at the end, for example, we will go to the end of our logs. We will take a very, very good result um, on the test data set. Only three percent of errors. Uh, it's, it's very good result for dense neural network. It's very simple, pretty simple data set, but let's switch. Uh, I'm not sure guys. So about you see, you see all the code. I, unfortunately I have no feedback here because I will increase the font. I hope you will see uh, all things well. Uh, so. The next example, in the following example, you could see more complex neural network, famous like LENET, uh, convolutional network. So here uh, we will define uh, another input uh, with, with parameters like image size, number of channels is equal to one because it's grayscale images, but for RGB, uh, real RGB images, you should uh, put here the free. Uh, uh, firstly, we will use convolutional layer. After that, special average pooling layer with different different hyperparameters. Uh, I think you should read documentation to know more about that. But uh, in reality, uh, the number two here means that you will reduce the size on uh, on the one dimension in two, and on a, another duration you will divide uh, on two two. Uh, here, this is a, an amount of filters which should be trained, the size of filters which will be trained, and different different initializer for different parts of or your layer. So I, I think you will learn it later, uh, these different things. We will go deeper, deeper, and it will be uh, finished with dense layer uh, with output size number of our classes it's 10 uh, and so let's run our second model and we'll see the output we has also pretty summary method here i will show you it will show you <clears throat> this method prints this uh pretty simple table with layer names, output shapes, a number of trained parameters, and uh, prints a small summary at the end. So he, this is a debug information which could be disabled by logging our uh, preferences. So, uh, and settings uh, in the uh, logging uh, configurations, for example, getting XML files and etc. And here we see very, very high loss value, but uh, it will be reduced after some iterations. Uh, here at the end, we will see uh, after three epochs, only only 60% of accuracy. It's war, It's well, the worst case. What is the reason? The reason that we used very, very pure and bad uh, initializers, as I promised. Uh, we will go to the uh, third example, improved uh, architecture, where uh, only initializer were changed from random normal initializers and constants to he normal. These normals helps to layers keep the mean close to zero and variance stable from layer to layer, as I promised, due to the specific internal calculation. And let's run this neural network. 
as I promised, uh, it, it has the same code of uh, compiling, of fitting, of evaluation. It's very, very simple. So I think we will take more pretty loss value closer to zero and more pretty metric values on the after the second epoch. Uh, so just let, let's wait just a second. Okay, more better guys, yeah? So uh, also you could uh, change not only uh, initializer, you could change activation functions. I will not run, but you could run it later if you're interesting uh, in uh, the demo pack. Uh, so you could change, for example, uh, activation functions to the relu instead of tangent or like in the second step uh, on the next step you can you can change the optimizer from the sgd it's very basic optimizer to the adam with uh, special uh, parameters which uh, should stabilize gradients uh, during optimization and it will uh, get you a few persons here maybe 95 or more or better uh, so also i want to demonstrate uh, some piece of code with a uh, model export and import. Our model should be, could be uh, imported uh, to the uh, JSON and TXT files. The configuration, the architecture of model uh, could be imported to the JSON config. It's compatible with Keras uh, library. Uh, this uh, uh, file format is totally compatible with Keras and uh, graphed from there. Uh, but our format of, very, uh, of data, Storage uh, is our custom format uh, in TXT files. It's better for debugging purposes now. So uh, after training, for example, we will train uh, our neural network during one epoch. After that, we will save it, evaluate the model, print the accuracy. Okay, forget it. After that, we will load configuration from the saved file, freeze some uh, layers, because we don't want to update, for example, convolutional layers. We could experiment with that. Uh, compile with another optimizer, for example. Uh, I suggest to keep the same loss functions because it's the goal of optimization, but you could uh, switch on the optimizer. Uh, load the weights from the files. Uh, check that accuracy the same. Train yet another epochs and uh, you could see that accuracy is better than uh, after one epoch. Um, I think it's very useful uh, when you need to start the training of your neural network to optimize your resources, GPU resources, etc. And also it's a kind of artifact which could be deployed. For example, you trained and save it. After that, you load your model for inference and predictions only. Um, Unfortunately, it works only for backend. I uh, promise that it will work in future on the Android devices uh, via uh, exporting to uh, TFLite format, but now it works for server-side Kotlin. Uh, I, I know that uh, maybe many of you are Android developers, uh, you should wait and you could start experiment on training models. I hope it will have the compatible API and uh, we will get in this year, this feature. So as a result, I hope you see that after one, after the first epoch, we get this accuracy, 80% after uh, second epoch, it, it was improved. So, and uh, the last uh, interesting example, for example, uh, you could uh, import really huge uh, trained model. Uh, this model VGG19 was imported from Python Keras. We load it and parse it model from uh, training it on very, very big uh, ImageNet uh, data set from billions of photos. Uh, we loaded the architecture of this model. We loaded the weights. Uh, now I will run the model loading. It's enough fast uh, for uh, one gigabyte uh, of model. So uh, it it will try to predict on a few photo, on few my photos. I will open it in just a second to demonstrate you. 
for example, this is me, <laughs> so young, so so naive. Uh, let's uh, check what was predicted. Lab code. I'm not sure. Maybe neck brace is better. Switch short JC. I'm not sure that is good. What about the second? Quail, partridge, termigan, roofed grouse, prairie chicken. Chicken. Okay, closer to chicken. So Egyptian cat. Very good. Uh, sports car. I'm not sure, but car wheel is on the picture. What about the broccoli? It's very close to broccoli. So uh, this is really, it's a very, very strange goldfish, but neural network, I'm not sure about, maybe it's African chameleon or wood rabbit. Uh, neural networks doesn't know. So uh, this is a beer. Neural networks thinks that this is a wombat, but brown beer uh, is very close here. And on the image eight, we could find the goldfish. Goldfish, so uh, VGG uh, 19 is very, very close. Uh, these images was uh, stolen from the internet. Uh, maybe neural networks uh, never uh, trained on such kind of data. We, I'm not sure here. Maybe it knows only about golden fish better than about me. I think I, I wasn't a subset. I wasn't. Uh, I didn't provide the subset of photos for training. So uh, you could uh, load our VGG models now, and I think that in future releases uh, more uh, models will be available, like Inception, ResNet model, DanceNet, EfficientNet, etc. But we need to wait. So I think I have not so many time. I want to uh, switch back on the presentation. Um, only uh, one or two slides. Oh, sorry, just a second. So hope you see the presentation, let's uh, finish. We have a few um, limitations here uh, in Kotlin DL now because it's very early alpha release. Now it's useful for image recognition, not for audio pre-processing, et cetera. And for some uh, regression, ML, regression ML tasks, for example, if you need to predict numerical values, I don't know, uh, home rates and et cetera. Uh, it has a limited number of layers. Uh, uh, the tiny number of pre-processing methods, you need to do a lot of pre-processing uh, manually. Uh, I think it's a common, uh, the common uh, pain for the Kotlin and Java uh, image pre-processing. Uh, so I hope that it will be available during this year, maybe from our team, maybe from the external contributors. Also, now only VGG-like architectures are supported. There are a lot of convolutional uh, layers uh, mixed together. I hope that in the next release, we will provide uh, more complex uh, preloaded models, which could be used. Uh, if you're interested in these models, you could pose the issue. Uh, you could start the discussion on the Kotlin DL uh, GitHub. I invite you there. And also, as I said many, many times, uh, many, many times, uh, it has no Android support now, but we are work uh, uh, on it. And we are very interesting, of course, in uh, export our trained model on the Android devices. And uh, in perspective, of course, no mobile devices. Uh, Kotlin DL roadmap is better than limitations. Uh, currently, we are working on new models, as I said, Inception, ResNet, DanceNet, very interesting uh, uh, models with different layers, with different branches, which joins to each other. Uh, uh, also, the current version could be trained on the GPU, but uh, the GPU settings of TensorFlow now are not available. You will run with default settings, and this is uh, not the bug, but maybe not useful for real GPU tuner tuners. And it will be available in the next release. Also, we will uh, go from the bin tray uh, to the Maven Central. Uh, uh, and uh, I think from the next following months, you will download us from the Maven Central. Will be available functional API. Uh, you 
will join uh, a layers not uh, like as a bunch of uh, sequence of layers as a list of layers, but you will join it via function composition. It will be more interesting. So uh, new layers will be added like batch norm, add, concatenate, device different device convolutionals. Uh, I am going to add regularization for layers. Uh, new metrics will be added, of course, because a few uh, metrics requests uh, were arrived uh, to the GitHub repository. So uh, we are working, as I said, in conversion to a flight, but it will be not the following release, maybe after the summer. Uh, also, we work uh, on integration with alternative or deep learning frameworks like on an X, maybe in the future in PyTorch, but uh, it's very, very, very far. Uh, and of course, we are thinking about uh, classical ML algorithm, which are not involved uh, involves uh, TensorFlow computation could be written uh, using uh, only Kotlin, for example, in different uh, Kotlin numerical libraries, like a uh, new library released uh, by my colleague Pavel Gorgulov Multic uh, for uh, multidimensional arrays, uh, highly optimized for calculations. And also, I want to share a few useful links. Uh, this is a GitHub. Please go to the GitHub, try our really great tutorials which was written by Maria Lusova and uh, to join to our uh, Slack, deep learning. If you're not now uh, the Kotlin Lang Slang, please join and join to the deep learning channel and feel free to join discussion. I opened it, uh, this feature a few weeks ago. I don't know how to use it, but I will be active there and, and other developers and other community members will join too. So follow me and the Kotlin for the data Twitter on Twitter. And this is the end. Thank you.